we're going to go ahead and survey our cast and the first thing we do is pretty much line up the cast so that the occlusal plane is relatively parallel to the floor and all the abutments are at about the same level. Then we're going to first look at guiding planes. And when I hold this surveyor analyzing rod up against the guiding play, plane area of the tooth, it looks relatively parallel. Um, this other side, again, looks relatively parallel at this position. So if I like that particular aspect of my survey, I guess I could move it just a little bit in this direction to make this one a little more parallel here and this one over here I might end up having to alter just a minute amount but hard to say it looks pretty good also. The next thing I want to do is look for undercuts and what I indicated from our first talk on part A is that this is a premolar on an extension based removable partial denture. I have to use one of those four clasping systems that relieve torque on the teeth. The first clasp of choice is the eye bar. So if you have an indication for an eye bar, you'd better use it on an exam um, because it is the first clasp of choice. So what I'm looking for on the eye bar is a mid-facial 0.01 undercut and it could be mid-facial or slightly to the mesial. And I, I have a pretty, just a little bit of one right there. I don't know if you can see this small triangular space of light right in here. But I have one that's awfully close to the gingiva. And I have a small one over on this side also. So what I'm going to do is check to see if in fact I have a .01 undercut using my undercut gauge. And I'm going to look at this one and I have it very close to the gingiva. Some of these casts are a little bit different. The last one I, I, I played with one and it, it was a, a better undercut than this one. But I'm going to make a little mark and mark my .01 undercut while I'm at it right here. I'm going to go to the other side, do the same thing, mark my .01 undercut. It's quite low too. I'm going to see if I have any others on that tooth because I can go slightly to the mesial also with my .01 undercut. There's one right there. I'm going to see if that's any better. It's not really much better on the tooth as far as height. I also might have a .01 distal facial undercut. In a more favorable position. So it's a little higher up. I have a .01 distofacial undercut right in here. So that leaves me some options. I can do a reverse circlet clasp. I can do an eye bar. I can do possibly um, a modified T-bar. It goes to the distofacial. Over on this other side, I had a mid-facial. I don't have anything on the distofacial there. And on the mesial facial, I also have a .01 undercut at about this position. Um, I could check on these teeth to see if I have a .02 mesial facial undercut because that would make my um, clasping the possibility for a wrought wire. I put in my 0.02 undercut gauge, which for you would have two notches. Yours are labeled by one notch for a 0.01 undercut, two notches for a 0.02, and three notches. Now I cannot get an undercut on the mesial facial where both this vertical aspect of the rod is touching and the little lip is touching. If both are not touching, there isn't an O2 undercut right there. 
as I look on the other side, again, I can't get any position where both my rod, my vertical aspect of the rod, and the horizontal lip are touching the tooth. So I don't have a .02 undercut on the mesiofacial of that tooth at all. Um, I could possibly have a .01 mesiofacial undercut, but we do not use a cast circumferential clasp on the extension base removable partial denture. So I think I have it positioned where I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and survey my cast. I'm thinking in terms of eye bars because that is the clasp of choice. And if I have that indication, it's expected that you use that. Now, one thing we didn't look at was, um, can we use a bar on this particular tooth? Is it contraindicated for the use of a bar? And what I would do would be I would go six millimeters down, five to six millimeters down from my marginal gingiva, and I would place a little mark on the tooth at that point, and I'm going to see how far out that bar would have to stand. There's my six millimeters. Over here, we we'll do the same from the marginal gingiva uh, right there. Now, let's put our analyzing rod in there and see at that point, the six millimeters, how far out does that bar have to stand? And if I put my little millimeter ruler in here, it's showing us that it's going to stand out uh, a little greater than a one millimeter, but not much. So that falls into our category where we can still use the bar. Same way over here, I'm going to put my analyzing rod in there, measure the space to my, that little six millimeter mark, and it is not one and a half millimeters. So I can use the bar class in that area. So I know my bars aren't contraindicated. All right, let's go ahead and put our lead in the surveyor and survey our cast. I like to support my lead with the sheath all the way down and have just a little bit of lead hanging out the bottom so that I tend not to break it as easily. And when I put it in my surveyor, I don't want to squeeze on that lead. So, we're going to keep our lead down at the level of the gingiva and make sure that the side of our rod is scribing the undercut, not the tip of the lead. So I'm going to come all around these teeth. Don't really have to worry about these that much. No metal is going to cross these. Mine is bending a little bit, so I'm going to... Let the lead touch the gingiva if, in fact, that's where your survey line is because it tells me something when I'm grading these casts. So if it's at the gingival margin, let it show that it's at the gingival margin. Show that you did, in fact, survey these teeth. Let it... I need to get it where I can control it a little better. All these casts, by the way, have a, a defect on the lingual cusp of the first premolar on the other side. So to tripod our cast, we're going to take our O3 undercut gauge and find three widely spaced marks, places where it will touch in three widely spaced positions on the cast. And I'm going to come a little higher because I'm having a hard time getting a good position there. All right, make a mark with your O3 undercut gauge. Place a red mark through that and across. Come on back, three widely spaced marks.
see that one very well. There it is. And over on the other side. And then let's circle those in blue. No question where our survey is. We'll be able to reorient our cast and so will the laboratory technician. When he gets the cast, he will line it up to where he can have that touching in those three locations. We cannot move this up and down. We're basically ready to um, decide our design and place it on a piece of paper.